Hello viewers, I hope you are all doing well. Today we are going to learn our second lecture of load balancer, net scalar that we have started. So what today we are going to learn is net scalar IP address. In which we learn net scalar uh, three types of IP that net scalar have. First is NS IP. Second is SN IP. And the third is VIP. We learn these IP and purpose of each of them and communication flow with user and servers in backend servers and communication flow for authentication mean triple A. So NetScaler IP mean actually NetScaler uh, uh, mean NS IP. First I am going to learn NS IP. So actually NetScaler is divided into three parts uh, inside mean logically. First one is NS IP. NetScaler IP, which we use for management purpose, mean to access the GUI, a graphical user interface, or for authentications, mean these types of work we can done with NSIP. And the second one is, uh, mean a virtual IP. Virtual IP mean for use, we can use it for load balancing, mean content switching, and for users. Users are set on virtual IP. And the last one is, SNIP, subnet IP. SNIP we can use it for backend communication, mean for backend servers that we are load balancing. So these are three IP we could learn. Uh, for example, let make me the diagram to learn it more easier. Let's suppose I have a URL. Mean uh, this is the, my user who is accessing the URL. Uh, let's suppose google.com and uh, it's on a public IP what's the net here come the net it's translated to a virtual IP mean it's on net scalar net scalar app 3 IP Virtual IP, management IP, this that's called NS IP, and uh, subnet IP. Mean here is the user connected with is the management user, and it's on NS IP. And here's the virtual IP. Mean Google, user accessing Google.com, and uh, the server is on subnet IP. Mean these are my server where this url has been saved so these are on snip subnet ips mean we the, the virtual ip mean my uh, directly can't uh, talk to the snip mean the data coming from the user url coming from the public ip then is translated then it came to the virtual ip if the authentication needed authentication also done on nsip and then nsip communicate with the snip so these are my ip address of netscaler i hope you get my point and you have learned the basics of that ip address the next thing is uh, net Netscaler Citrix Netscaler deployment model. We have three deployment models in Citrix Netscaler. I think all the load balancer have three deployment models. First is one arm. Second one is two arm. And the last one is multi arm. Mean I have these three deployment model for Citrix NetScaler deployment: one arm mode, two arm mode, and the multi arm mode. Now the question is how to choose the right model and how to implement it. Mean the first thing we need are routing and switching. Mean the person who is learning that scale, I mean any any type of load balancer, 
who have the who should have the basic knowledge of routing and switching means which uh, work on layer 3 or oh, sorry layer 2 it's a layer 2 device mini here is vlan and router works on layer 3 mean ips mean what router do we actually router communicate uh, router give, give us the facility to communicate with different subnets mean with different uh, types of networks uh, so it can help us for example i have this router a and i have router b and there is my network 1.1 ip sorry 1.1.1 and 1.1.1.2 and this network is 1.0.0.0 and here along with b connect me to the c here is 2.1.1.1 and 2.1.1.2 mean router give us the route to 2.1.1.0 we get 2.0.0.0 so router give us a facility to a to ping the c router so that's our main purpose of router so i'm just basic i'm going to start soon a series of uh, on router and switches mean ccna ccnp then you can learn it's betterly so what is one arm mode deployment one arm mean netscaler only have one interface for snips and vips virtual ips virtual ips is what where the user come and snip is what where the backend servers so uh, whereas Netscaler have only one interface for these of tools. Mean one interface, one VLAN. So that is our one arm mode. In two arm mode, what we have is yes, in two arm mode. When we have we use two interfaces, one for the virtual IPs and one for the SNIPs. That is two arm mode. And in multi arm mode, I use, for example, this is my Netscaler device, and uh, I have uh, one interface where the my S users are connected, and where is my servers are connected. I mean this is. SNI mean this is uh, VIPs and this is SNIPs. So this is my multi arm mode. Now the question rise that it looks like a one arm mode. And then why I'm saying that is multi arm mode? I have these type of different I mean I have multiple these server. I mean I have there is users and here is server. On one net scalar devices, I have users and I have server. I mean Google.com stored here, Yahoo.com stored here, and Gmail stored here. These are multi arm mode. I hope you get my point. So let me show you some. <clears throat> Topologies to learn this one arm, two arm, and multi arm more easier. So, this is my one arm mode. Uh, Let's see, this is my one arm mode. There's public IP is coming. Here is the public users. They are accessing portal.company.com. And here is the firewall if we need. And uh, here is only why I have one interface. I mean, my public IP address is 213. Then it translates it to netcom and 192.168.10.12. Which translates to 10.12. Because 
virtual IPs. And then it go inside the Netrix, Citrix Netscaler and MI management IP is this NSIP. And then it come back to the switch and switch connected to the servers. Mean these are the actual, uh, let me create it more uh, actual example of one arm mode. It look like that I have this uh, uh, a switch. Let me, uh, yes, I have the switch and uh, here is the users and uh, here is the my servers and uh, here is my Netscaler devices connected. So it looks like these. Mean Netscaler has only one interface connected for Amazon IP and for VIP. So these are the actual example of one arm. Now let discuss two arm. So this is the two arm. Mean the the main purpose, the main benefit of two arm is that virtual IP and SN IP are on different subnet. Mean they are on different network. We are using router for their communication. Mean the uh, public users coming from the internet and virtual IP is on different subnet and then it's on the SN IP and then it goes to the server and server is also on different IPs. So what to do, do? Here is the routing table. Route coming from 0.0.0, .0 move to 192 to the virtual IPs. And from the virtual IPs, they move to the SN IPs. And from the SN IPs, they move to the web servers, to my backend servers. Mean we have two interfaces. Mean we have two VLANs. One for the virtual IPs and one for the SN IPs. We have two networks. One for the virtual IPs and one for the SN IPs. So it's the main, I mean it's the topology in which we can learn our two arm mode. So I hope you, hope you get my point. Let's learn multi arm modes. So here is the multi arm example. If I let me wait. Uh, so yes, if you cut that, this is portion. The next portion is look like the one arm mode. It's the purely one arm mode is look like. But what we have done, we have added these thing. I mean if I cut these and only learn these, it's also one arm mode. And if we cut these and add this one portion. It also a one arm mode and what we can do in multi arm mode we add these different backend servers on the different subnets and on the different phase for example I have DMZ servers I have development servers I have I mean, production servers so it's called the multi arm mode I hope you get that by this topology. So these are the main mode. We have three types of mode. One arm mode that we have discussed. I mean it have only one subnet IP and uh, one and that's uh, inter one subnet interface and that's for the virtual IPs. We have two arm mode that is used for the in, in which we have different networks, different interface for the subnet IP and for the virtual IPs and we have multi arm mode that is shown in the screen i hope you get my point so 
if you like that video make sure to subscribe like and share thank you